Hello boys and girls. Welcome to another English language lesson for grade seven. And today we want to do some reading and we also want to look at recall and inferred information. Are you ready? I have a question for you. Do you like reading books? Do you like reading anything at all? Would you say that reading is fun? Now let's explore reading because reading is fun. But the key to reading is that you have to make your reading fun. Are you ready? Let's go. Now, what is reading? How would you define this term reading? If somebody asks you that, what would you say? Now, reading is the process of looking at a series of written symbols and getting meaning from them. When we read, we use our eyes to receive written symbols, letters, punctuation marks, and spaces. And we use our brain to convert them into words, sentences, and paragraphs that communicate something to us. Reading can be silent, in our head, or aloud so that other people can hear. Reading is a receptive skill. Now you may ask yourself, what does that mean? Now through it, we receive information. But the complex process of reading also requires the skill of speaking, like what I'm doing right now, so that we can pronounce the words that we read. In this sense, reading is also a productive skill in that we are both receiving information and transmitting information, even if it's only to ourselves. And that's very important. We are both receiving information and what? Transmitting it. All right, boys and girls, let's continue. Now, reading is the third of the four language skills which are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Let's look at the four language skills again. Listening, speaking, reading, writing. And in, in English language, you want to perfect these four skills, and we want to build upon them. Now, in our own language, reading is usually the third language skill that we learn. It is very important to respond to punctuation in reading texts to derive meaning. Now, when you read a text, think about it. Do you just read through everything without stopping? Or do you stop at the various punctuation marks and do what's necessary? Now, let's look. When we come to the full stop, also known as the what? Period. Good. What do we do? We should have a complete pause. Right? Not a long pause, but a complete pause. And we have our full stop right here. Also known as the what? Period. Also known as the period. Next punctuation mark. The comma. So when we come to the comma, we should have a slight pause. What we should have? A slight pause. So whereas with the period, also known as the full stop, where we have a complete pause, now we have a slight pause. And we have a comma right here. Let's move on to the next punctuation mark. The question mark. Now, when we come to the question mark, what should we have? A rise in pitch of voice. We ain't screaming, you know, but just a little rise from how you would normally read. And we have a question mark right here. And finally, the exclamation mark. And this is where we express an expression of strong feeling hurry come quickly and we have an exclamation mark right here yesterday while i was walking home i saw a big fat snake coming towards me and i yelled help help as i looked across the street i saw my friend denise and i asked her did you see the size of that snake i just ran away from Dennis replied, no. Can you imagine that now I'm wondering if everything was all in my head? I really need to stop watching horror movies before I go to bed. Now let's try that again. And I want you to read along with me and observe 
what's happening at the various punctuation marks. So when we come to the exclamation mark, when we come to the full stop, also known as the period, when we come to the question mark, when we come to the comma, are you ready? One, two, three, let's read it together. Yesterday, while I was walking home, I saw a big fat snake coming towards me. And I yelled, help, help. As I looked across the street, I saw my friend Denise. And I asked her, did you see the size of that snake I just ran away from? Denise replied, no. Can you imagine that now I am wondering if everything was all in my head? I really need to stop watching horror movies before I go to bed. Good job, boys and girls. Now, let's look at another paragraph entitled, The Incredible Machine. I want you to read along with me and let's observe all punctuation marks. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Everyone has a favorite attraction at an amusement park. And I am no different. However, unlike most people who seem to prefer roller coasters, my favorite ride is a little more gentle. Every time I go to Coney Island, Navy Pier, or the Santa Monica Pier, I absolutely have to ride the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel is simple and yet also quite complex. That is, riding it is easy, but how it works is complicated. A series of carts are attached to a wheel, which is attached to a rim. That rim rotates vertically around an axis, and gravity keeps the carts upright. As simple as the ride seems, only advanced engineers can make safe and fun Ferris wheels. Now, good job. Now, I want you to practice. Every time you read something, observe all punctuation marks you don't want to feel like it's racing like to say everyone has a favorite attraction at an amusement park and i am no different however or like most people who seem to prefer roller coasters if you read like that so you don't observe the punctuation mark you're going to become out of breath and as well you will not understand what you would have read and the whole point of reading is to comprehend what you are reading. You want to understand the passage before you. So take your time and make reading fun for you. Now, when we are doing comprehension, we have something that is called recall questions. And basically with recall questions, the answers are taken directly from the facts given. Where are the answers taken from? Directly from the facts given then we have inferential questions inferential questions now the answers are obtained through reasoning of the given facts let's go that again the answers are obtained through reasoning of the facts given so here you what you have to do you have to look at the facts presented and infer and come up with the answer when talking about writing, explicit means something that is stated plainly, while implicit refers to something that is implied and not stated directly. So with the recall questions, sometimes for us to call them explicit questions, that's where everything is stated plainly. You can go to the passage and find the answer stated there. Whereas with implicit or inferential questions, this is where you have to infer. The meaning is implied. It's not stated directly. You have to use the information presented, and then you take it out. Now let's do an activity. Sam and his cousins walked to the store. Sam bought a bag of chips <laughs> while his cousin bought a bottle of water. If I ask the question, what did Sam buy? Would that question be implicit or explicit? Let's take our time and go that again. Sam and his cousins walked to the store. Sam bought a bag of chips while his cousins bought a bottle of water. If I ask the question, what did Sam buy? 
Will that question be implicit or explicit? What is your answer? Now, that question would be explicit. Why? What did Sam buy? Tell me. The answer is right there. He bought a bag of chips. So the answer is stated directly in the passage. A bag of chips. Let's go to the next one. Number two. Tyler overslept and missed his bus. He looked at his alarm clock and it read, 8 45 a.m he was more than 30 minutes late for school he casually walked to the kitchen and poured himself some cereal what can be inferred about tyler tyler overslept and missed his bus he looked at his alarm clock and it read 8 45 a.m he was more than 30 minutes late for school he casually walked to the kitchen and poured himself some cereal. What can be inferred about Tyler? A. He is nervous about being tardy. Tardy meaning late. B. He is in a huge rush to make it to school. C. He could care less that he's late. And D. He is hungry. answer is C. He could care less that he's late. Now some of you might say, but no, sorry, I think the answer is D. He's hungry. Now let's look at the line that says, he casually walked to the kitchen and poured himself some cereal. So this is telling you, you know what? He doesn't care. He's going to eat. And then whenever he's done, he's going to get himself ready to go to school. If he cared, and I guess why we're hungry, do we move slow when we're hungry? When we're hungry, we just want to get something to eat quickly and get it done. So that line shows us that, you know what? He could care less that he's late. So we infer that through the facts, right? Through the fact that is stated. Are you getting the hang of it? I hope you are. Let's go again. Number three. Amanda needed to finish her science project by the 5th of March. She had everything she needed except her type report. She knew that her type report was worth 50% of her grade. She was going to fail. What explicit information can you pull from this story? Let's go it again. Amanda needed to finish her science project by the 5th of March. She had everything she needed except her typed report. She knew that her type report was worth 50% of her grade. She was going to fail. What explicit information can you pull from this story? 
A. Amanda is lazy. B. Amanda ran out of time. C. Amanda already had a high enough grade in science. And D. Amanda didn't do the type report. What explicit information can you pull from this? Amanda didn't do the type report. What does it say? She had everything she needed except her type report. So the answer stated right there, it's explicit. Number four. Since it was getting late, the band decided to go home and get some rest. The lead singer decided he wanted to stay a little longer and practice some of the new songs. What can be a piece of implicit information in this story? Let's go it again. Since it was getting late, the band decided to go home and get some rest. The lead singer decided he wanted to stay a little longer and practice some of the new songs. What can be a piece of implicit information in this story? A. The band needed rest. B. The lead singer has great dedication. C. It was getting late. And D. The band had some new songs. Look at it carefully. The lead singer has great dedication. We can imply that through, through what's happening because we what? It's getting late. Everybody wants to go home and get some rest. So we know that they're tired. But what happened? The lead singer decided, you know what? I want to stay a little longer to practice some of his new songs. So we get to say the lead, the lead singer wants everything to be perfect. He wants the band to be perfect. He wants their performance to be flawless. And finally, number five. Jada looked at her alarm clock. It was 8.45 a.m. She quickly got dressed and grabbed a granola bar from the cupboard. She jumped on her bike and away she went. She was late for school, but she wasn't going to be super late. What implicit information can you get out of this story? Let's go it again. Jada looked at her alarm clock. It was 8.45 a.m. She quickly got dressed and grabbed a granola bar from the cupboard. She jumped on her bike and away she went. She was late for school, but she wasn't going to be super late. What implicit information can you get out of the story? A. Jada is a messy eater. <laughs> B. Jada could care less about school. Jada has a bike. And D. Jada cares about school.
What is the answer, boys and girls? What do you think is the answer? Jada cares about school. So Jada decided, you know, when she realized 8, 4 out of 5, what happened? She quickly got dressed. Unlike Tyler, Jada quickly got dressed. Grabba was there to eat and she left for school. And I'm quite sure many of you at home, you don't like to be late for school. And if you, want to, and if you are like Tyler, please take school seriously. Even your online classes, you know, you want to be on time. Now, I want to thank you for participating in today's class. This brings me to the end of today's lesson. And I do hope that you would practice reading. I want you to know that reading is fun. Remember, you have to make it fun. If, I like to say, a chapter a day keeps illiteracy away. If you can read a chapter of something, a paragraph of something every day, you are going to keep illiteracy away. And reading, when you like to read, when you love to read, it develops other skills. You learn how to analyze and comprehend, and you will be a very good individual. So I want to encourage you to be good, be safe, until we meet again. Sir Jared.